Welcome to Technotis. MSI reached out and said, would you like to check out this motherboard? And I thought, yeah, sure, no, no problem. But when the box arrived, it looks huge to me. I mean, this is absolutely massive. So look, <laughs> this is, this is the normal size motherboard box here. Okay. This is a lot bigger. And this motherboard is one of the most expensive motherboards in the world. So me as a creator, I'm wondering what the heck do I get if I pay close to two grand on a motherboard? Well, let's find out. Well, I don't know where you get your prices from, but it's actually more like 1200. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So oh see my top cam can't even fit it all in here all righty on top here we have some like you know specs and things by the way if you've seen like ripped boxes and things over here it's because it's been to some other media outlets before and i'm like a little bit of the second hand boy here on this channel but don't worry guys one day we'll get the first things as well and we'll get the nice clean things to unbox but regardless we're still gonna find out what the heck's going on over here i guess this is the motherboard here and here we have mm -hmm, a kit of ddr5 which we have actually already checked out on this channel we have an msi batch keyring something like that we have these this is like the full armor what msi calls the armor that goes on the motherboard we'll see where that that's gonna go two pieces here by the way i didn't mention this is called the z690 godlike okay <laughs> wow that's very very heavy underneath here okay we have some motherboard accessories liquid tubes Oh, so this is also with the actual liquid cooler. So the liquid cooler, the, what is it? MEG um, Core Liquid S360 millimeter cooler is in here as well. So we've got some motherboard accessories, lots of cables and, you know, your M.2 screws and everything that comes with the motherboard and some more cables, everything you need. What do we have over here? We have the Wi-Fi antenna and... Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I'll have to like open the sides like that. And then we have some more things here. So this is the water block head. You know this guy? That's the one with the display. MSI's done one now as well. Whoa, there's a lot of cables coming out from the AIO. Also, it comes with like these motherboard standoffs. If you want to just make the motherboard into a test bench. And if you're like into overclocking or that type of thing. But hey... Here's the rad, the usual, you know, 360 millimeter rad. I think this is the Acer Tech pump size. Yeah, it's the same as, you know, all the pumps you get, like from whether it's Asus, you know, the Rugin or Fantex Glacier 1. They all have basically the same tube, same pump, everything, same rad. It's the Acer Tech cooler, basically. Brackets and stuff. Okay, this is for the for the cooler radiator fans okay we have some fans here they're all black fans so no rgb here very very cool we're going to be using those fans later on a build if you want to check the build or see the build hit subscribe we're going to do a build with all of this equipment on the channel as well it would be only a waste to set this out and not do a build on the channel okay so here's the the motherboard then let's wipe it all nice and clean so one thing that i noticed straight away is that this guy over here somehow comes off so this screen or whatever this is because you can have some stuff show on the screen of this motherboard as well comes off interestingly it's got like this magnetic connector if you want to see the rgb you're gonna have to see the build video and then we're gonna see all the rgb over there there was like one plastic piece over there that I'm not quite sure where this is from. There's like a corner with a magnet in there. Found it. So it goes down there with a magnet, and then you can take it off and then actually screw your motherboard in. There's a screw hole underneath there, which is pretty, pretty cool actually. Very clever design to actually 
um, make everything very smooth and, and slick. Let's start to look at some of the motherboard headers then and what's going on. First of all, obviously this is Z690 motherboard, which means this is LGA1700 uh, socket there for the 12th gen Intel and hopefully 13th as well, whenever that's gonna come out. Also on this side, we have four DDR5 DIMM slots. Obviously, if it's a high-end board, it's obviously DDR5, not DDR4. Then on the top here, if we're looking at what's going on here, the system fan and CPU fan. Altogether, there's quite a few fan headers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten fan headers, but also this pump fan header on the top over here is rated a little bit higher at 36 watts. So it's uh, three amperes. All the other ones are are the usual two amperes. By the way, if I show you the side of the motherboard here, the actual design or all the headers are like kind of underneath here, which makes it very clean. As you can see, you've got all your SATA and front panel USB and things going on there. On the top here, we have two 8-bin EPS or CPU power here. Next to it, we have a Corsair header. That's for like Corsair RGB and stuff. If you've got any of Corsair products, then you can use this header over there. Then we do have Dr. Debug or post LED screen here. Then on the top there, there is a voltage regulator or voltage meter. So if you've got a separate external, like a voltage meter type of thing, so you can actually control and monitor the voltages here of CPU and things if you're doing overclocking. I'm gonna probably just skip a lot of the overclocking features of this because we don't do that in this channel. But if you're into like overclocking that and doing a lot of gaming that, then this is probably one of the best boards in there. This over here is your RGB header. So we had one Corsair one. This is your 5 volt RGB header. Another 5 volt RGB on the bottom there. And looks like there is only two 5 volt RGB headers on the motherboard. But at the same time, we have a 12 volt RGB header in here. And I think there's a cable in the motherboard box if you want to change the Corsair header there to 5 volt header as well, then you can do that because that is just the normal 5 volt header, you know, like three pin from the Corsair header, you can do that as well. Then next of all, what you can see over here are two front panel USB-C headers and both of them are 20 gigabits in speed. And I think only MSI does some of the cases that have two front panel USB-C uh, headers, but still uh, fantastic to see them. And then underneath there, we have two USB type A front panel headers. They are both five gigabits in speed, six SATA parts. Then there's some sensors and other little headers over here. Then we have USB 2.0 headers, two of them in here. Lots of other sensors and other stuff in here. Front panel header, front panel audio header. Then we have the LED switch here. So you can switch all the LEDs off on the motherboard with this simple switch. That's a pretty cool switch. We have a bio switch here. Water flow meter here as well. If you want to monitor your, if you, you know, got liquid cooling and all that. This motherboard actually features dual ROM. So if you like kind of somehow get blocked out out of one of the ROMs of the motherboard, you can just switch it to the other one and then change things. Just overclocking features, I guess. There is 20 plus two smart power stages and each of them are 105 amperes. So you can know that this is like one of the highest end power motherboards that give enough power, good power, clean power power to your CPU, especially if you're an overclocker, you probably are more excited about this. But for creators, it's just good to know that, okay, it's very high end MOSFETs and power phrases and everything there is very much well, very well cooled, as you can see here. And it's just fantastic. In fact, the interesting thing here is that the actual heat sinks over here are kind of like a blow through heat sinks. So as you can see, they've like kind of bend those fins over this side so that the air would go through and then kind of come out from the top because the actual cooler that will mount and cool this in that is in the box there actually has a fan inside like the ROG Rugin for example as well. So that will blow the air through these and actually will cool the VRMs very well as well. I was just looking if there is an actual active fan underneath here as well, but I can't see an active fan. But another thing I am super excited about is the actual M.2 slots underneath here. And you should be as well as a creator because wow, my goodness, is there a lot. I'm just seeing whoever had this motherboard previously, whoever media outlet, has absolutely stripped this flipping screw here. So let's hope I can get this off. Use the right screw header, guys, when you're doing this type of thing. Also, get the iFixit kit, because then you've got all the right headers over here. Oh my goodness, this is going to be very difficult. Oh, okay. I still got it. Okay, so that's very interesting. 
There is an actual LED kind of strip that goes through all the way here of the motherboard and this is also on the heatsink and they've gone through some crazy things to actually make sure that the, even the heatsink on top of it will be RGB if you get it off. As you can see underneath here, there is just a connector here, magnetic connector that will go inside that bit over there as well. And they it will connect up and then boom, this is magnetic here as well. I don't know, does this whole thing come off? I'm not quite sure. RGB underneath everywhere, literally even, even underneath this little cover. Well, not so little. There's an RGB something Heather over here. And as you can see, there's a lot of M.2 screws. Whoever had it before me, interestingly, chose to put their M.2 in this slot rather than on the first slot, but hey. So as you can see, there's all, all of these heat sinks have a connector to actually keep the RGB going on all of this thing. There is like magnetic connectors in here. Like this is really cool engineering. I really much enjoy this. All the M.2 heat sinks are double-sided. One, two, three, four, five, six M.2 SSD slots. All of them capable of PCIe Gen 4 storage. That is a lot of storage on the motherboard. They basically just included like the expansion card slots on here. I don't think there is any other motherboard that has six of these. Me as a creator, that makes you, makes me super excited just because on my workflow, I've made some videos on my channel about the actual storage workflow, but you have an OS drive and then I have two project drives and then one cache drive that takes four away. But those two project drives are now because I'm making so many videos and some of them are so big especially the pc builds like get to like 600 gigabytes in size for a single project or even higher the threadripper build was 1.4 terabytes that means that i would need some more project drives and i would love to have some here and here as well for project drives just to add extra ones and if i've got spare drives that is absolutely fantastic did i mention that there is a reset and power button obviously on the motherboard as well this is underneath this heatsink that goes on the bottom then also there is the pcie slots in here here so this is x16 slots that goes to the cpu gen 5 this is x8 slot to the ch ch cpu as well pci gen 5 so you can run dual gpus here if you wanted to but this is x8 slot and if you put anything in here both of them become x8 because the cpu doesn't have enough uh, pci lanes and this bottom one is pci gen 4 x four slot but if you have all of those m.2s occupied you're going to lose this bandwidth here as well but when you get it there there is a few like kind of switches going on over here if you run all of the m.2s you're not going to get access to this one or what you can do is if you have m.2 four slot which i believe is this slot over here no this one over here if you've got a fourth one here occupied then what happens is this starts to run at x2 uh, slot so two pca lanes and then this one will become just one pca lane if you want to add an extra i don't know 10 gigabit card for your networking or some kind of audio card you can use that one but then this m.2 will run a little bit slower other than that if you just want like usual one graphics card with lots of storage then all of these can be gen 4 storage and x4 slots also this m.2 will be unavailable when you're installing something on this slot as well or running like secondary graphics card here this will be unavailable just so you know so if i was you what i would do is get the graphics card in there and then use all the storage at full speeds and then you don't have any switches because these two share bandwidth here and these two share bandwidth here before we're going to look at the io of the motherboard i just want to show these armory things so basically msi does give you these things here as well to kind of put on your motherboard it comes with standoffs as well just so all the headers underneath here are super super clean which i enjoy like a lot i think this is one of the nicest features that we have on msi look at this like all of the headers are just going to disappear you're going to have this super clean motherboard look when you're looking at it on the top here and bottom there it kind of all lines up with the design and kind of makes you feel like the um, nzxd type of uh, motherboard designs even there's a hole in here to see the postcode there so you're still going to see it through on this like kind of window can you see there's a little window there hello by the way did i mention that all the back port is like nicely plated off so you're not going to accidentally just you know shave some uh, capacitors or whatever things voltage regulators off on the back of the motherboard which i have done so that's good 
very rigid, you know, if you want overclocking or so on. But hey, let's have a look at the I.O. then here. We have six USB type A ports and they're all 10 gigabits in speed. Just, you know, oh, just get the full fat speed. Don't care about USB 2.0 or anything else very fast. We have two LAN ports, 2.5 gigs and 10 gigabits. 10 gigabit makes me very excited for creators just to run your NAS on that. We have Thunderbolt 4 ports, two of them in here. Then there's mini uh, display ports in. This is where you're gonna get your video input from your graphics card. So from graphics card into here, and then you can get like, you know, video out from Thunderbolt as well. Even though you can get the Thunderbolt video out from the CPU, iGPU as well, if you're running one of those. But if you want like more power or if you have a CPU that doesn't have the iGPU inside, like an F version of this, like a 12900KF or something like that, you can get the display out from the Thunderbolt if you have it connected to the graphics card. Then we have a flash BIOS and clear CMOS switch over there as well as your audio inputs outputs and even SPDIF out so optical out here as well. Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2 absolutely amazing. I'm gonna have to look into what this M Vision here is as well. I think you control this guy in there through this USB so I'll have to check what you do there. So then is this motherboard worth the money? I think as a creator, really, um, not really. But at the same time, if you are asking me what is the best motherboard for Z690, then uh, we're probably getting there. There's a lot of gimmicky features, and if you're a creator, you're paying a lot for a lot of the water cooling features, you know, overclocking stuff here, overclocking metering and all of this thing. If you're a professional overclocker though, or like to just get as much juice out of your CPU, RAM, GPU as possible, then this is one of the best boards that you can get. But even as a creator, what makes me most excited are the fast USB-C connectivity. I could probably monitor my um, CPU or PC temperature on one of these screens, as well as having, you know, the, the cooler there as well. And most of all, the six M.2 slots with Gen 4 storage is absolutely amazing to me. Just to have that is absolutely amazing. A question to you, would you buy this or is there anyone on my channel who's watching this and thinking, do you know what, that looks like um, something I would be interested in? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you think about that. Also, if you do want to pick this up, I'm gonna uh, leave the link in the description below. Thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.